Hi, welcome to my guitar tutorial. Today uh, I'll be talking about 84 combinations, 4 bars per mode, 12 major keys, 7 modes, cage scale system. Guitar tutorial part 4. Okay, so that's, I'm not going to cover all 84 modes today. So uh, what I did in the introduction, I was just playing over a G9 sus to a G9 vamp, and I was playing the key of C in five different positions, and I include open position also. So that'll be kind of the, the format of what I'll be doing today, mostly talking about uh, the five uh, cage positions, uh, going through those, and then improvising with all five positions and the open position uh, over... Uh, uh, several different chord vamps. I'm not sure how many I'll get to today. I'm planning on doing maybe four uh, of the 12 that are on the sheet. So let me talk briefly about uh, some of the resources that are below the video. I have about 10 different uh, links to PDFs and things like that. So I'll just go in order. So the first thing is the iReal Pro format. So if you have iReal Pro, you can download and uh, copy and paste the HTML or you can open up the link in your uh, iOS device uh, for the... Um, you know, the, the chord chart that I have here of the different modes. So I, I probably will not be covering every single mode today, but I'll be picking out uh, selected ones. Uh, I'll also have a, a PDF of the chord chart so you can follow along. So the chord chart also has uh, whatever the parent key is. So for example, uh, if, like, if you look on the, the chord chart, E Ionian is uh, E major 7 to E major 9 is Ionian. Um, a uh, half diminish would be a locrian from the key of B flat and so on. Okay, so then I also have these note cards, which I've I've talked about those before. So, so so the the note cards you can just kind of um, you know you know d download this, uh, print it, and then you can write out your own your own progression. This was G Phrygian. Uh, or whatever you can make up, up chord progressions, riffs, or whatever from from random um, uh, modes, and, and then it, it, whatever chords you want to pull out of those modes. So, so that's what I've done. I've I've created seven of these. Seven times uh, twelve, uh, twelve keys is eighty-four combinations. So this is up to a uh, number four. Okay. So then I have a bunch of PDFs, okay? I have key of C, key of F, key of D, key of A, uh, all five positions. Uh, all, uh, every, every one of those uh, PDFs has, also has an open position except the key of C. So the key of C has a separate, um, a separate PDF of open position. And then also the key of D, I have a, a separate uh, one uh, that's E Dorian. So I'm, I'm basing it off of like the open E. And then I also have one more PDF of uh, the, the key of C cage positions, but uh, each um, each position is on a separate uh, page. So if you wanted to have a bigger a bigger diagram of that, uh, you could um, you can do that. You can have that. All right. So let me see if there's anything else I want to talk about here. I guess that's I guess that's about it. So so those are the the main things. So so I'll just kind of jump right into uh, what I just did. So. Uh, so uh, G9 to, to G, uh, G9 sus, that's a uh, uh, mixolydian, a key, a key of key of C. So if you look at the key of C, I just went ahead and I was improvising out of each of the different positions. The first time through I played clean, second time through I put the expandor on just to give it a little bit of an edge. So uh, let me just kind of just sort of pull out a couple a couple of different things. So so kind of what, what my method is is to just kind of familiarize myself with the area of the fingerboard, and then uh, and then as I'm going through it and imp improv, I'll just pull out some different things. So so let's say I'm let's say I'm right here in um, let's say I'm in open position. So the, the nice thing about open position is you can do like different kind of hammer-on pull-offs, including, uh, no, let's, let's say right there, that's a nice little, little riff right there. So just pulling off open strings, this is the G9 here. a really simple idea there so I'm just pulling off GFE DCB AG and then 
and then sliding up to the B. And then I did a, a similar thing uh, on the next string, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D. And I decided to, to go up to there. So that, that's oftentimes a really a good strategy. So whatever you do on one string group, oftentimes if you move it up e either across, because uh, usually you're, you're moving across a fourth in the guitar, either a fourth up or a fourth down. Okay, um, let me do, let's see. Let me just see. Yeah, how about this one here? That's kind of a nice sound. Okay, that's just a G, uh, a G, a seven, G, B, D, F, A. So you can just hang on the A, or you can maybe resolve to the G or the B. Do, 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 or. Let me try that here. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to go in a lot, a lot of detail with with all these if I want to cover all four keys. So we'll just kind of see how this goes. Let me jump up to. Um, yeah, so this is a sound I like. Uh, so we're on a G9 sus. So you can kind of think of that as almost like a D minor seventh chord. <laughs> how the piano kind of resolves there. Okay, listen to the piano. Okay, I'll do it again. So D minor seven, D F A C. Okay, I'll do the same here, D F A. So that, that's a sound I like a lot. So it's, it's, it's almost like taking one chord, uh, turning it into a, a two five. Uh, so then another sound that I like is this uh, playing B minor seven flat five. All right, so that's the so that would give you third, fifth, seventh, and ninth of that chord. Okay, so I'll do that, uh, and, and then I'll just kind of go. I just kind of go somewhere in the middle of the board there. So there I just added in the B, D, F, A. Okay. And that leads me into, so, so one of the things I'm, I'm encouraging you to do with these cage patterns is to really explore them. So that's kind of what this, this video is meant to do, is, is meant to say, well, you have these positions, but you can get a lot of things out of here. So right here you have this, so I'm on a G9, basically G, a G7 chord. Uh, you have this B minor seventh modal pentatonic, A, B, D, E, F. So I like that sound. Okay, so I'll do the uh, B minor seven flat five arpeggio, and then I'll do this, and I'll do that uh, minor seven flat five uh, modal pentatonic. Notice what I did there. So, little slide thing, uh, half step bend. Which, which you hear me do? You hear me do that a lot on my videos. I just, I just really like that sound. And it, and it's 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 it gives you uh, some interesting melody, and it's a little bit easier to get in tune than to do a, a whole step bend. Then, then notice I also threw in some basic chromaticism. Uh, boo -boo. So you can always put the boo -boo -boo -boo, connecting chord tones. Da -da -da. Okay, so um, that's, that's good. Okay, now the next one here. See, so some people would say, well, this is Dorian. All right? So, so then right away, uh, as a guitar player, I see D minor pentatonic. So I think D minor, D minor pentatonic is a good scale to play over a G9 chord. It just so happens that it works really well here because of that G9 sus. So, so what I'll do is I'll just kind of play some basic D minor pentatonic riffs over this G9 to G, uh, G9 sus, and I'll kind of emphasize the C note whenever I'm on the G9 sus here.
can kind of see how you can emphasize that. Then a, a sound that I like a lot, I, I do this in, in my videos a lot. This is the uh, uh, Beatles, I Want You, uh, She's So Heavy. <laughs> I just like that sound. That's coming right out of that, that D Dorian. So you can do it like that, double note bend, or or you can also go up, go up to here, AC. And then kind of playing off the D, which is the fifth, that's the fifth of the uh, of the, the G chord. So I'll kind of play around with that riff a little bit. Okay, and so, so we're playing a D minor pentatonic kind of blues riff, but we're playing it over this G7. G9 uh, uh, vamp. Expandor. So I have the expandora set for really, really low gain because I'm already running my amp uh, with the, uh, the 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 blues junior with the um, the channel volume about on eight, so eight, and then the masters on five. So I'm already overdriving the amp a little bit. I just kind of like that. I like that sound, kind of like a like that Kenny Burrell kind of sound, a little bit where the amp is kind of slightly uh, uh, breaking up. All right, and then. Uh, Okay, let me talk about one concept here. So you have mixolydian, but you also have E minor, G major pentatonic, which is a good sound. Now, now the the, the problem that a lot of uh, you know younger players, you know, people who don't know that much about the guitar yet, um, they often will, will try to use this E minor pentatonic, but they'll but they'll use they'll kind of emphasize the E too much. So I think what what makes sense to me. Instead of using just the, the, the plain box, go down to the G. And then also do that slider bend. So, so I think that's a little bit better. So, so, so you're going a little bit out of the position. So let's hear that. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking that, that uh, you know, C major uh, scale lick uh, position, but then I'm, I'm I'm leaving out the F and the C, and I'm just playing E minor. But but here you can think of it more like G major pentatonic over this G. So that's the thing about improvising. So I kind of hit a couple kind of interesting licks, and then I tried for a like kind of a Jimmy Page do do do, and I kind of mess it up a little bit. So that's part of the the process is, is sometimes you go for stuff, and sometimes you don't quite hit it. Uh, that lick that I did here is a nice a nice one. I remember uh, uh, back in the day there was a guy who was my uh, guitar tech, a guy named uh, John from. Uh, uh, you know, one of the local music stores, and uh, he, I remember he, he did this lick. So, so this, so this is just uh, bending the A, and then you add, uh, and now to the G. So do, or you can also do it with the, with the pinky. E either way. So, um, I, I, actually, I think what he did, they said they sometimes call that the train whistle lick. That's a, that's, that's a cool a cool sound. There's a lot you can do with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll play with that just a little bit. Yeah. Right, so I did a little bit of hybrid. 
pick too. I'm not a really big fan of hybrid pick because I keep my nails really short. So I, I sometimes I, I don't like the way the tone changes. So unless I'm looking for a special effect, so I, I, I like to use the, the pick instead. So those people who, who watch my videos might wonder why I do that. It's just, it's a, it's a tonal choice. Okay. Okay, that's just a couple ideas. I'm just gonna go now to the C9. Uh, yeah, so this is actually make a nice. Uh, so if you're doing like a blues and like a like a some kind of blues in, in G, um, this would be a, a, you know a, a good to uh, incorporate these patterns. Okay, so we'll go. Um, I'm just gonna kind of play through. See if I could do each, each pattern each time. So I'm not gonna do note names that they're all on the sheet. There's so just open position. So so the thing you have to be careful of here. If you're not paying attention, you might accidentally hit that that, that uh, uh, B note. Okay, I'm just gonna come up with some some ideas. I'm just gonna play through the scale a couple of times. See if anything comes to mind here. C9 sus. So notice I'm taking advantage, taking advantage of those open strings. I think I also did that flat, flat third, third. And I think I might do some chromaticism too. All right, so any of those times, you know, connecting the chord tones chromatically, you can always do that. Okay, so now we're at the next position. So, so you can consider that sort of G minor, G, G Dorian. So then, so G Dorian over this uh, C9 vamp should work really well. So, so even like quarterly, like if you just bar across there, that's basically a C9 sus. Okay, and maybe I'll just do like a little chord. So I'll go here. And then if you wanted to make the, 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 the chain, do do do. I dropped out the root. I just I just do a little bit with that. So C9 sus is barring across G minor pentatonic. So that so G minor pentatonic basically gives you a, a, a C9 C9 sus. Okay. Or just regular C9. Down to G. So that would probably work a little bit better from a lead perspective if we went up to here. So I might do that a little bit later. Okay, so now we're at this position here. All right, so here you have that same idea. So, so you have C major pentatonic here. So just remember that that's not your root. The C is your root. So I often will recommend C. And then maybe add that note there. And then you're still in position. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll play that uh, same C major pentatonic coming out of that position over this uh, C9 vamp. So notice what I did there. So I did um, so bend here, whole step bend, and then half step bend on the A. And then I also did that flat third third. There's a lot of different things you can do uh, do with that. And then and then this you would call this maybe C mixolydian. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'll do a little pedal tone thing. So this is something I talk about. Uh, I, I like to say different people use this. So I talk about Jimmy Bruno, certainly Eric Johnson. Uh, a lot of people use this uh, this device. So I'm going to do a pedal tone off of the C and then off of the G. And just kind of see what I can I can come up with here. gives you kind of an interesting kind of melodic, melodic idea. Okay, so then we go to here's like this be like C, starting from C like Mixolydian. Okay, so here I'll pull out uh, like a couple of arpeggios, C, E, G, B flat, or C, E, G. All right, so that's, that's going up to the ninth. Okay, I'll just kind of mess with that a little bit. C7 and then C9 arpeggio. So, so notice what I did there. So I kind of broke it up into pieces. So if you look at it here, G, B, flat, D, F. So there's that, that kind of two, five sound. That's kind of a nice sound. And then if we come up a little bit further, C, E, G. I'll kind of mess with that a little bit. So the two, five. G minor to C7, and then C7, and then I'm just kind of landing on that 13 there. All right, so I, I, I did a video recently on this. I, I kind of like this sound um, kind of going across in these diatonic sevenths chords, G, G, B flat, D, F, G minor seventh, C, E, G, B flat, C7, and then F major seventh, F, A, C, E. And I'm landing on the nine. Kind of mess with that a little bit. And now I just resolved it. Okay, so there, let's go to the next position. Okay, so there's that same, there's that G minor seventh arpeggio. Okay, I'll kind of. Okay, so I, I, I'll, I'll just kind of play that and I'll resolve to different notes uh, off of that G minor seventh arpeggio over the C9 sus fan. Okay, so how about here? I'll, I'll, so this is the next position. How about I'll pull out a C? So, so this is kind of a cool sound. C uh, triad to a B flat triad. So C C E G B C E G C E G, and then the B flat a major triad is right below B flat D F. E. Kind of thing. This kind of reminds me of a kind of like a Grateful Dead sound. So I'm just going to use just different pieces of the C. Uh, C R P C um, to B flat over this band.
so no, so I'm, I'm just trying to throw in a little bit of a little bit of chromaticism every now and then just so you, you can see how you don't you don't have to get locked into in, into this okay so let me let me let me work a little bit with this position this, this is the, the dorian starting from here so uh, maybe i'll kind of mess with that kind of bluesy lick Okay, John, the John Lennon. Uh, and I put the uh, expander on. Here we go. see uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just do maybe one more I won't do the uh, the key of a today I'll, I'll, I'll go back down to this e minor e minor 7 to F uh, F sharp minor 7 so this is kind of e Dorian so this would be key of D so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit a little bit about that open position diagram so if you look um, on the you know underneath the description so you would have e F sharp G a a B C a B C sharp D uh, D E F sharp G A G A B C sharp B C sharp D E E F sharp G A All right, so you can take advantage of all those you know uh, you hear you know page does you know things like that um, you know, double pull offs triple pull offs so I'll just kind of mess with this a little bit um, and see what I can come up with. I guess I'll put the expandora back on. So E minor to F sharp minor. So notice what I did there. So I, I took that uh, this this pattern and I just moved it up the octave. And that's that's a little melodic riff I came up with a, a couple days ago. Landing on the nine, and then landing on the the uh, the sixth. Okay, so let's go up to let's see. Yeah, so so you, so we're key of G. G. So you're going to have a lot of the same notes here. Okay, so I, I haven't done this this lick yet. So so this 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 is a cool sound. This sort of extended arpeggio E G B D F sharp A. So that, that's sort of a cool sound. So that's actually available in two different places. You, it's, so if we're in the key of D, it's available off of the four chord, and it's also available off the one chord. So, so those are both really, really interesting sound. And then off of off of the, the, the D, F sharp, A, C. Right, so I'm just going to kind of go back and forth between those those two extended arpeggios over this uh, E Dorian vamp, the, the last one on the, on the chord chart.
right now just doing some of those which you hear me do that a lot on my uh, on my different videos that's a technique i learned uh, from an old howard roberts book a howard roberts guitar method he talks about uh, being able to do the front and back uh back raking okay so where's that okay so now i'm, I'm kind of here kind of catches my attention I, I don't really okay I don't see anything I think I might let's just, let's just go to this this position here how about uh th so there's your uh, e, e minor seventh arpeggio and then up to this one up to f sharp uh, so let's go let's maybe th this this is sort of an interesting sound so you got e minor seventh arpeggio f sharp minor seventh arpeggio then on either side, you have a major seventh arpeggio, G, B, D, F sharp. And then you have the D major seventh arpeggio. Right, so that's kind of an interesting sound to kind of superimpose those different uh, seventh chords over, over a static vamp. So let's hear, let's hear what that sounds like. So am I on? I go put the exp expandor back on. kind of an interesting sound you can kind of uh, explore that a little bit okay so then you're just so then you got your you got D major so I already extracted out that that major seventh uh, arpeggio okay here's another thing I used to do a lot of when I in my old teaching days uh, so the other thing that you can pull out of here is you can pull out uh, every single position has one of the five pentatonic patterns so right here you have E D E D B A G E D uh, D B A G E. Right. right, so that's E minor pentatonic, and then right up, and then that's right below the blues block. E G. Right, so, so that's another thing that you can do. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll kind of play a couple licks out of E minor pentatonic in, in both positions. So you have your D major scale. And then you have your uh, pentatonic. So, so maybe what I'll do is I'll do some minor pentatonic, and then maybe I'll throw in some of the um, some of the scalar notes also. See, I, I did a lot of different things where I was kind of pairing, pairing the two pentatonics together. So this is something I used to practice a lot as a as a young boy. Uh, is that when I first started learning about pentatonics, I tr tried to figure out different ways of connecting them. So like here, like two two string patterns in this one. So I'm just going back and forth between the the pentatonics that are right next to it. And then I also did, I think I did some chromatics, which I like a lot. All right. Pull off. Uh, and then I think I also did this kind of blues. Like I, I like, I just kind of like Stevie Ray Vaughan. I just like a Stevie Ray Vaughan thing. He, he would do a bend or you can also do a half step slide. Okay. A little bit of 
pentatonic, and then, th and, and then just you know just gradually throw throwing in some of the some of the color notes, and I think I might have also thrown in the, the D major. Okay. Okay, uh, so I've been doing a lot of improvising, uh, so I don't think I'm going to do an ending improvisation for this one. So, uh, so the idea here is that you just explore all the different patterns, try to you know play to the scale, get familiar with it, and then try to take little pieces of it. Don't always play the whole pattern every time, uh, and then see if you can you know, start learning the notes. So I, I included the you know the diagrams with the note names and everything so you can start learning the notes and everything and so you have your different resources uh you have these random uh you know random chords here you can just uh you know loop them around as you wish okay well thanks for listening and watching <laughs>